couple of notes on our upcoming schedule for the rest of the weekend. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, there'll be news conferences in here, the Brian Burwell Memorial Interview Room, starting at 1.35. Syracuse student athletes will be first, followed by Jim Beheim, and then Middle Tennessee State University at 2.20 followed by their head coach, Wisconsin will be here at 310, followed by their head coach and Xavier at 355. So we start at 135 and we're finished at 435. Uh, student athletes and head coaches tomorrow. Sunday, uh, first game, it tip off is at 510 local time. Uh, Syracuse and Middle Tennessee State at 510, Wisconsin, Xavier, We'll start 30 minutes after the conclusion of the first game. Notes on the game that just finished. Xavier improves to 28 and five on the season. That's the first game they have played against Weber State. Uh, Chris Mack is now seven and five in NCAA tourney. And the Musketeers have now won their last three games in this building, the Scott Trade Center. One more note, Xavier finished at 48% shooting from the floor for the game. Uh, they are now 25-0 this season when the Musketeers shoot at least 40%. 25-0, 40%, they're at 48 tonight. Weber State finishes at 26-9. Now 6-17 all time in the NCAA tournament. Wildcats 23 first half points was their lowest first half output of the season. Wildcats are with us. McKay Cannon, Joel Bullenboy represent the student body for Weber State. Randy Ray, the head coach, will start off this session with a statement on the game, and then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen on the dais. Randy, please. Well, first of all, I couldn't, uh, I can't be more proud of our team um, for what they've accomplished this year and how they represented themselves on the court, off the court. These guys, we got really good players, but uh, these guys and everybody on our team is much, they're much better people than they are players. And, and that's probably what I'm most proud of, the character they display and, and how they handle themselves and who they are. Um, we battled, I mean, we battled, we fought. That's what we've done all year. Uh, I felt like uh, we got to the point where we were right there in the game, second half, I believe it was a seven point game. 
we had two or three, we got a couple stops, and then we had two or three shots that just, they were in, and they came out. And, uh, you know, had a couple of those gone down, I think we could have grabbed the momentum a little bit and, and really made it, uh, made it exciting coming down the stretch. But overall, couldn't be more proud of these guys and their effort and uh, how they represent Weber State. Questions for any of the gentlemen? Start right here. Coach, you talked yesterday about Xavier's physicality. Were Reynolds and, and Farr in the post what you expected they would be? Yeah. No, they're big, strong boys. I mean, they're, they're strong. They're just big and strong. I th our guys battled them. Um, uh, but they are, yeah. They were kind of what I thought they would be. Uh, they may be a little bigger in person than I thought they were on film. But, but they're very good players. And what they do is it's, it's hard to double team them. And it's hard to give help because they shoot the ball so well in the perimeter. And we tried to go down there a few times and help out our bigs, but uh, they kind of made us pay a couple times when we did that. But they're a physical team. Um, but I, I didn't feel like they, you know, out physical this out of our game. I mean, I didn't think we backed away from that at all. I just think they got they had a couple bigger, stronger bodies. But they got they got a great team. They got a great team. They got all the ingredients to be special, and that's why they are special. And and uh, the part of it is they are physical, tough team. On the aisle. Randy, what was it about their defense, especially in that first half, that was making it so tough for Jeremy and your other shooters to get good looks? Jeremy, they, they just, they weren't going to let Jeremy breathe. I mean, uh, they were everywhere he went. If his defender was a little late, they jumped somebody else out at him. They weren't going to let Jeremy beat him. And, uh, and they did a great job on him. And you got to tip your hat to him. And, we had a hard time getting Jeremy free. Um, so then we decided to throw the ball in the post a little bit more. And I thought Joel did a real nice job uh, in the post. But uh, they pushed us out a little bit with their pressure. I thought in the first seven to eight minutes, um, we were catching the ball way too far from where we normally catch the ball. But then we started to get it under control. I thought in the second half, uh, we played much better offense and we played deeper. Uh, we played a little bit uh, offense with more force. You know, we ended up shooting a pretty good percentage, percentage in the second half. but. Uh, they're a good defensive team. They just are. And they got a lot of bodies they can keep throwing at you, too. Right here in the front row. Um, Joel, as, as you've uh, uh, played your last game at Weber State, what, what emotions go through your head as that buzzer sounds and you know you, you wear that jersey for the last time? Just that it's not a good feeling to lose. But looking back, it's been a, a great career. I've been on uh, many great teams. and. I've just embraced all of it. I've enjoyed everything. And to be able to be in this position, to be at the NCAA tournament twice out of my four years, that's really good. And I just, I don't really have anything negative to say. Coach, uh, along those lines, could you try to summarize maybe what Joel's meant to your program over the last four years? Yeah, as I told him in the locker room, I don't have the words. I mean, I just don't for what he's meant to our program. and met to our university, and uh, I just, I remember the first day he walked into our campus, and he's 6'8", 200 pounds, and uh, he's kind of a kind of a kid. Four years later, he's walking out of here, he's a man, and he's ready to be, uh, he's going to be successful, whatever he ends up doing, he's going to be very, very successful, because he's a great person, he's a hard worker, he's got tremendous character, and uh, you know, one thing we hope when we bring kids into our program, uh, and I think that should be one of our main missions, is when they leave our program, they need to be ready to be successful in whatever they do. They need to be successful in life. They need to be good parents, good husbands, and we hope that we can help them become that. Well, this is one guy I'll never worry about, and I know what he's going to end up being. And uh, so he's meant a tremendous amount to our program in so many ways and to our university and the city of Ogden. Uh, he's he's first class, and he's a poster child for what we want in our program. Uh, McKay, it's, uh, your first experience here. Obviously, uh, nobody wants to, to see it end in a loss. But I mean, uh, how has this ex experience been for you for your first time? I mean, it's been great just to be with my teammates, and just I've been trying to soak in everything during this year. Um, I love my teammates, and I've really enjoyed the experience being out here. Um, it's just been fun. I just wish it would have gone the other way, obviously, but that's what happens. Any 
Anything? Yes, back to the first row. Uh, Coach, I mean, what does an experience like this do for the guys like McKay and the guys who haven't been here yet for the future? Obviously, still a lot of young kids on this team that are going to be on the be there for a while. Hey, it's going to be it's great experience. It really is, and uh, I think when Joel and Jeremy, Rashad, Kendall, um, Ryan, or uh, was Ryan with us? No, he wasn't. They went two years ago. I think it really helped them for this. I thought they played pretty calm, and I think the. The more you experience it, the better chance you have to be successful the next time you come back. And and so, and we've got everybody back except for obviously Joel. Uh, he's a big piece, but uh, I just told these guys, remember what this feels like because we're going to get back here and we're going to find a way to win a game. And that's what we're going to end up doing. I I really believe that. So it's a great experience. You got to go through it one time, and then the next time you come back, you just feel more comfortable. And I think guys will perform better once they do come back with a year under their belt. So McKay did a great job tonight. Tough little guy, man. He's tough. And uh, you know, I told these kids, I said, they've done something that I don't think a lot of teams in the country can say they've done this year, and that's win three championships. We won the Florida Gulf Coast Tournament. We won the regular season Big Sky. We won the Big Sky Tournament. I don't know how many teams in the country can say that. So they've had one hell of a year. Take the night out of it. They've had one hell of a season. And they've earned every bit of it. Anything else for the Wildcats? All right, gentlemen, thank you. And congratulations on your season. The victorious Musketeers are with us. Jalen Reynolds, James Farr, Trayvon Blewett, Remy Abel represent the student body of Xavier. Head coach Chris Mack will start off the proceedings with a statement on the game, and then we'll go to questions for all five gentlemen on the dais. Chris, please. Coming into the game, we had uh, tremendous respect for Weber State. Uh, you know, you watch them play on film, and it becomes apparent that their front court is a high major front court in terms of their size. And, you know, Ballenby is, or Ballenboy, I should say, is a guy that, uh, you know, dealt with double teams all year. He shows athleticism in the first two minutes of the game on the baseline dunk. And, uh, you know, our ability to, to really um, keep him in check for the most part, uh, assert our will on the glass, you know, to out-rebound a team by 16 in an NCAA tournament game isn't easy to do. 
And then the other thing that was really, really important coming into this game was being able to chase uh, Jeremy Singlin, uh, not let him catch uh, off staggers, a la Reggie Miller. And this guy to my left, Remy Abel, did a tremendous job. I don't know if Singlin worked harder uh, in his career to get seven points than, than he did tonight. Um, but you don't do that without, with, without great effort. And I'm really proud of this team. Uh, our seniors, especially, really stepped up. I mean, uh, for James Farr to have 15 rebounds in the tournament game, and like I said before, Remy's ability to, to chase defensively was, was, was tremendous. Very fortunate, excited to move on. Start right here. Remy, uh, about that defense, Jeremy Singlin averaged about 18 points coming in and was held to seven. You always draw the, the, the top player as, a, as Xavier's best defender on the ball. Talk about your approach tonight and, and how key that was to really keep him in check. Um, yeah, like Coach said, um, you know, we did a, they did a great job preparing us and um, preparing us to play them. And um, like I said, I just want to stay focused, stay locked in. Um, obviously, he's a great player. You know, he averages 18. And um, like I said, I just want to make it tough on him. And even though um, I was guarding him, this is a team effort defense. So, you know, my teammates did a great job. If I had a, um, a lapse of, um, you know, letting him drive, you know, James made a big block. Or um, So, like I said, um, yeah. Continue. James, monster night for you. Um, it, you played like a senior that didn't want to go home. Will you talk about kind of your mindset heading into this game and how you were able to exploit um, some opportunities there close to the basket? Well, I think you said it perfectly. I didn't want to go home. Um, you know, I just wanted to be able to set the tone and have my teammates uh, be ready to set the tone uh, for the first game of a tournament for us. You know. Um, we're glad to get this win, but we know we're nowhere near our goal. And um, we just want to keep getting better every game. Front row, gentlemen. Um, question for all of you. Um, curious how um, Weber State compares to team that, teams that you've played in the Big East, um, just on all levels. We'll have Jalen answer first and Trayvon second. I would say. Uh, Boxing now, they kind of compare to Villanova in, in a way. Um, obviously, Ballin Boy um, being in that paint is, 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 a, is a big presence, and we want to make sure we keep him off the glass and um, to the best of our ability. And uh, that's what we did tonight. Uh, you know, they're a pretty good team. You know, they uh, if they were in our conference, they could probably compete with you know every team in our conference. Uh, they got two really good guys in uh, Singlin and Ballin Boy, and um, you know they're pretty physical, and I think they you know fit well in the league. On the aisle. Uh, everybody can answer this question except for Jalen. Who wins a dunk contest, Jalen Reynolds or the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> All right, we're going to go Remy, Trayvon, and James in that order. Um, man, I would have to go with uh, Jalen. I've never seen him dunk, Incredible Hulk. So, yeah, Jay, I got you. Yeah, you know, being a good teammate, I'm going to have to go with Jalen, too. So, uh, you know. I mean, if Incredible Hawk could dunk, that'd probably be impressive. I want to see it from my own eyes. Yeah, I'm going to have to piggyback off those two. Let's say Jalen. <laughs> he, might, he might be mad at me for a week if I don't choose him. So <laughs> I'll choose Jalen. Right here. Uh, how locked in were you guys in today to what your own planning was? Um, and I ask that because there was a big upset uh, at 2.15 on the same court earlier today. Did you know about that heading into this game? Um, yeah, I mean, we watched the game earlier and uh, we saw that. So, you know, that kind of made us, you know, want to be even more locked in just because those type of games can happen. And, um, you know, we kind of changed our defensive uh, strategies a little bit. So we had to be, um, you know, even more locked into that. So I think we were pretty, you know, focused. Stay. Jalen, every time they came within seven, you guys had an answer, whether it was, a, you know, a jumper or one of your dunks. Can you talk about that and be able to really kind of stave off anything closer than that gap of seven points? We just want to just keep getting stops uh, and stop trading baskets. Um, them obviously getting the ball inside was our biggest uh, deal. Obviously, we want to uh, trap that and uh, not let him um, go one-on-one -on -one or get any easy buckets. Um, but yeah, they kept going seven points, so we just want to get stops and uh, keep answering back and um, making, making shots tonight. On the aisle here. Uh, one of your defining tricks all year has been your ability to get to the free throw line. Today you only had four free throw attempts, but you still were able to win. 
Is that something that, like, going into a Wisconsin game, you're going to need to be more aggressive attacking the basket, or do you just think it was just one of those days you weren't getting the calls? Chris, you want to take that one? Uh, I would just say that uh, a lot of that had to do with Weber State. Um, they, don't, they don't get extended at all. You know, on ball screen situations, it might be the only team on a pick and roll that defensively doesn't involve a third player. Um, you know, that's why we had uh, the ability at times to get all the way into the lane. We missed a few floaters from three or four feet with our guards, but our bigs, uh, for a majority of time, were able to get behind the roll man. Um, so in answering your question, it's a very difficult team to put fouls on um, because, again, they don't get very extended. They play soft on the perimeter. We got to the bonus earlier in the, fr in the second half than we did in the first half, um, but yet all the buckets that we seemed to score were either step-in threes or layups at the rim where we didn't get fouled. So uh, I don't think we were unaggressive in any way, shape, or form. We're going to continue to play the same way offensively. And, you know, you've got to uh, you dictate a little bit by how defensively they play you. And that was what they chose to, to do and how they've done it all year. And that's why they've been a pretty good egg on defensive team. Back over here. Chris, did you have a chance to watch any of that first game, and do you have any preliminary thoughts on Wisconsin? Uh, I only watched maybe a couple minutes when I walked out of the tunnel. Um, th there's no need for, for me to watch the game until we, we, we advance. So uh, I, I don't want to get caught up in you know, watching styles of play or plays. We, we had our own focus with Weber State. Um, I think Trey hit, hit the nail on the head when he said we made a few defensive adjustments. We trapped the post, which we rarely do. Uh, we had Trey and Kaiser uh, jumping out on ball screens. They've switched all year. I was really proud of these guys for being able to make the adjustments that we felt like we needed to make in order to win the game. But no, I didn't watch any of the game. All the way back on the right standing. Thank you. Chris, I'm just curious. Did w When you saw Michigan State fall on this uh, two seed like you guys, did you how did you use that? Did you remind your players that this is something that can happen? Or did you even mention it at all before your game? They're, you know, they're pretty smart guys. I don't think I have to mention the, the two seed lost. They, they watch the games. Um, you know, it, it's, it's why people tune in you know, to the NCAA tournament, because upsets happen all the time. But uh, I, I felt like our team, uh, from the very minute we drew Weber State to the moment we watched tape on their personnel, the moment we went over their actions, uh, th there wasn't a guy that was, that was yawning, that wasn't paying attention. That's how this group's been all year. Um, and so I, I didn't necessarily worry about uh, a letdown. I did worry about Weber State playing at a high level because they won three games in three days. They're the best team in their conference. They had won 26 games coming into the year, or coming into the tournament. So that, that was our only focus. You know, we can't control anybody else that wins or loses. And, um, you know, we're just, very, very happy that we're advancing. Anything else for the Musketeers? All right, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good job. Good job.